More recruiting on today's episode of the show. On this edition of the Locked on Louisville podcast, we're going to talk about Karan Davis committing to the Louisville men's basketball program, and then two key prospects on campus for the football program in Wu Spencer and Joe Crocker. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On, the Wobble Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. Juco guard Karan Davis recently committed to the Louisville men's basketball program last week. We'll talk about um, what he brings to the Cardinals program. We'll also talk about two key football prospects on campus ahead of National Signing Day next week. That is William Wu Spencer and Joe Crocker. So we'll begin by talking about the basketball portion of the show. Juco guard Karan Davis uh, committed to the Louisville program on, I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, But this is a player that received an offer from the Cardinals just a little over a week ago and made his commitment um, official uh, not too long after that, six foot seven guard originally comes from Gary, Indiana, three star prospect, um, very accomplished high school uh, standout. Ended up going the uh, JUCO route, played for I believe it was Paris in Texas. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go back and look at that real quick. Um, played for Paris uh, last season as a freshman. points per game, 6.6 rebounds, named um, all-region second team um, in that conference, playing for Paris Community College. Transfers over to the state of California, where he plays at uh, L.A. Southwest, and currently having a very, very solid season, 25.7 points per game, 7.1 rebounds per contest to go along with 3.3 assists per game. Um, He is second in the California Community College Athletic Association in scoring. Um, So this is a very interesting addition for the program because you can look at this one of two ways. And as this fan base has been very, very divided over the past handful of months on the, um, you know, the season and Kenny Payne, um, so on and so forth. This is another... um, you know, thing where we see the fan base divided because of the rankings. Karan Davis currently, uh, according to JucoRecruiting.com, other Juco uh, recruiting services in terms of rankings, none of them have um, Karan in the top 100 in Juco prospects. Um, Another thing that people have been – talking about is the lack of offers. Um, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but I've seen a lot of people out there talking about how Davis does not have one other Division I offer um, outside of Louisville, which if that is the truth, that is concerning because you know sometimes you can overlook rankings, but when there's no offers to be had there either, it, it just makes you wonder if it's a little bit of a reach. Um, But like I said, I think that you can look at this one of two ways. You have the concern over the offer sheet, the concern over the rankings. Um, He turns the ball over a decent amount. Um, Six foot seven for L.A. Southwest does a little bit of everything. I think he um, impacts the game in more ways than just scoring, and that's saying a lot, averaging over 25 a game. But also 7.1 rebounds, so he attacks the glass very well. Um, isn't um, you know selfish with the basketball, 3.2 assists per contest, but he averages 4.3 turnovers per game, so more turnovers than assists per game. Um, that could be um, 
you know, an indication of extremely high usage to where the ball is in his hands, um, you know, significantly, maybe more than it should be when you look at the turnover numbers, or maybe it highlights, um, you know, him making some decisions that aren't the greatest on the court. Uh, but regardless, I think that one thing that's been kind of concerning for me is just, you know, the lack of Division One offers. Um, there's not really much film on Karan Davis. People will say, oh, well, Dalton, you're being a little hypocritical considering that just a couple days ago you told us why you believe Gabe Sisk deserved an offer from the University of Louisville despite not having any Power 5 Division One offers. That is true. But I've seen Sisk play for the past four years um, multiple times. So, um, you know, I'm vouching for him in the sense of me having seen him play a lot. I don't know much about Karan Davis. Um, I think that this is an addition that could work out really well for the Cardinals. But even so, uh, the top rated Juco guys, um, every single season, only a handful of them really are able to make a difference at the next level, especially at the Power Five. Sure, Juco has been very, very good to a place like Louisville when you look at Chris Jones, um, L. Ellis, so on and so forth. It could have been Jay Scrub as well, but he ended up going directly to the NBA. Uh, Sidney Curry came from the Juco route. Um, just overall, I think that when you see Juco guys go from the community college level to the Division One Power Five level, a lot of times it's your like most highly rated guys. That's not to say that there aren't some exceptions. That it's not to say that Karan Davis couldn't come to Louisville and definitely make a name for himself. But I look at this addition and I think, well, this is a roster that needs a complete overhaul for next season. Um, it is no doubt that this is a team that's going to have to hit the transfer portal hard very, very um, significantly. They're going to have to bring in about five to six players. You bring in Emmanuel Okorafor, who looks solid in the limited action against Notre Dame on Saturday. Now you add uh, Karan Davis to the mix. Two guys that, in my opinion, are um, you know maybe not necessarily project-level players. I think that uh, Emmanuel Okorafor is a developmental prospect, but for Karan Davis, being a guy that's played at the community college level back-to-back uh, -back seasons, doesn't have a, a full four years of college eligibility after this year, you look for him to make immediate impacts early on. Um, I don't necessarily think that, um, you know, there's a lot that tells you what we're going to see from Davis next season. I think that's what makes a lot of fans um, a little bit uneasy about this addition is that everyone knows that Kenny Payne and company are going to have to absolutely excel in the offseason in terms of recruiting, they're going to have to go get multiple guys from the transfer portal that have produced at their previous stops that can come in and immediately make an impact. And you're not talking about one to two players. You're talking about a, maybe a whole starting lineup and some guys off the bench. So in my opinion, what to expect from Karan Davis, if you can get significant contributions off the bench to where he's giving you um, – you know, 15 to 20 solid minutes um, in a rotational setting to where he's um, alleviating some of those or scoring some of those scoring responsibilities and um, crashing the boards and giving you high effort. I, I like his game uh, from a film standpoint of what we've been able to see, but really it's just kind of highlight tips at this point. So it's hard to truly dissect, um, you know, his game overall, you know, uh, a tall guard that attacks the rim pretty well uh, can show that he shoots the, the three ball at a respectable clip, needs to um, take care of the ball a little bit better, but uh, also unselfish with the basketball. Just makes you wonder, you know, I think that this move doesn't really do anything for uh, the transfer portal. It, it doesn't mean that you don't have to go after and get this position. Yes, it's a guard that you can enter into the equation, which is nice. But at the end of the day, I think that this still means that you have to go out and get five to six players. If before this edition you needed to go get five to six guys from the portal to consistently contribute, you need to go get five to six players from the portal to consistently contribute even after this commitment because you can't go into next season with a bunch of players that um, – it's just kind of 50-50 um, on. I'm not saying that Karan Davis can't be a good player at Louisville. I'm not saying that uh, that Emmanuel Corfor can't be a good player at Louisville. But you're banking a lot on development. 
And as of right now, I know you can blame the roster as much as you want, but right now we haven't seen a lot of development, at least through this season. We haven't seen a lot of progression, so you have to wonder how much development you're going to see um, in the long run. So you have to get guys that are ready to contribute immediately because um, – you know, Louisville is staring down one of the worst Power Five seasons, if not the worst, in um, NCAA basketball history, and it's very, very clear that a lot of, um, you know, a lot of roster turnovers going to have to happen in the off season. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, I think Davis uh, has the potential to be a rotational piece at Louisville. If he is a starting player, um, that means that you know he's you know, hitting his perimeter shooting very well and he's defending at a high level. But at this point, um, I don't necessarily feel comfortable projecting a JUCO prospect that is not really ranked inside of the top 100, doesn't have another Division One offer. If he does, um, I haven't heard about it. Um, I, I feel I don't feel comfortable projecting a guy, um, you know, that that isn't really ranked all that high to come in and play a starting role right away because I feel like that's kind of how you get into a position like Louisville is in this year. So, um, you know, you have to wonder about the competition that he's playing now over in Southern California. I think they're in the, in the same league as the uh, uh, East LA Huskies from uh, last chance U. So I wonder if um, we'll see um, uh, Karan Davis in the next uh, season of um, – Last chance you, but regardless, here's the last thing I'm going to say about it. This is a recruitment that, you know, if Louisville were to take a chance on a guy like Karan Davis, like Emmanuel core for as developmental prospects, I get it. I mean, I'm not going to argue with it. I think that they have a pathway to create a name for themselves, but that doesn't change that Louisville still needs to hit the portal significantly hard. Uh, they need to um, completely overturn this roster with, guys that have produced um, pretty significantly at the Power 5 level or, you know, at the mid-major level as well. So we'll continue to talk about the roster as it, um, you know, gets added to, you know, heading into the offseason and such. But for the remainder of the show, let's dive into the football segments. Um, William Wu, Spencer, Joe Crocker um, on campus in a key recruiting weekend ahead of National Signing Day next week. We'll talk about both of them. Here in just a second, after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, FanDuel. Um, the NFL playoffs are obviously here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. Um, they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, by placing a measly $5 bet, you get $150 in free bets guaranteed. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Um, all of the bets for the AFC and NFC conference championship games are very enticing. They're all in an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So heading right on into the second segment of the show, one of the key recruits on campus this weekend for Jeff Brom and company ahead of National Signing Day 2023 uh, defensive lineman, four-star prospect, William Wu Spencer, uh, originally from Mel High School, transferred to New Albany High School ahead of this season. Six foot five, 315 pound, 315 pound uh, lineman is ranked as the 44th best lineman uh, according to 24-7 Sports, and the fourth best prospect in the state of Indiana. Currently holds a crystal ball projection to uh, Kentucky. Uh, will decide on February 1st between the Wildcats, Michigan State, and the Louisville Cardinals. Visited Mark Stoops' program last weekend, and now it is encouraging that he is on campus here at Louisville. Um, a recruitment that you wonder if the Cardinals would have gotten in the mix with had Scott Satterfield still been here um, and not Jeff Brom, more importantly, because of the connections to the Aspirations Jim Chris Vaughn. Um, William Spencer will be making his decision at Aspirations Jim. Um, this is a scouting report from Alan True, the national recruiting analyst of 24-7 Sports, projects him as a Power 5 starter and compares him to Raekwon Williams from the Michigan State Spartans. He says, two-way player in high school who could play either offensive line or defensive line come college. Bigger body, but well-proportioned and looks college-ready. Shows some twitch and has good quickness getting out of his stance. Strong punches with violence on offense and can drive defenders backwards and into the ground. 
Power makes him hard to stop as a bull rusher on defense. Has the same quickness off the snap there. Can be a big, strong, zero tech, but is a good enough athlete to move all around the line of scrimmage and play as a three or five tech in certain situations. True goes on to say, needs to polish technique on defense and regardless of position will have to adjust to a much higher level of competition in college, but has the body type, strength, and play demeanor to be a very college, very good college player and potential NFL draft pick at either possession. Um, outside of you know, Louisville, Kentucky, and Michigan State holds offer from Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, South Carolina, Virginia Tech, um, so on and so forth. Um, so one of the local prospects that a lot of Cardinal fans have been, um, you know, in the know about for the past couple of seasons. He's been a guy that a lot of people thought that he was going to end up at Kentucky, and he very well could still end up with the Wildcats. That's a very real possibility. Um, it's going to come down to how well the visit goes at Louisville. Um, no inside information here, but this has the feeling of a recruitment that will come down to the two hometown schools um, and a solid recruiting battle. One of the, I'd say probably one of the first recruiting battles that you will get uh, between Mark Stoops and Jeff Brom head to head. Uh, so one to take a look at will spent or William Spencer, Wu Spencer, as he's uh, known by um, was a very solid contributor at my alma mater Mill high school for Chris Wolf and company uh, ends up transferring to new Albany. Allen mentions um, the lack of, High-level competition makes you wonder of how he projects at the next level. Also interesting to see whether or not Jeff Brom and or Mark Stoops view Spencer as more of an offensive lineman or defensive lineman at the next level, but solid to have that versatility to play either or. Um, so that's a good problem to have. I would expect that both of these schools, and I would say that Will William, I keep calling him Will Spencer, Wu Spencer, um, that Wu is probably looking to play defensively in college, um, having been listed as a defensive lineman. Um, watching his film, you do wonder about the competition, but you know, 6'5, 315 pounds, he's got the size immediately. Um, will uh, do wonders in a college um, strength and conditioning program ahead of the season. I'm not sure how much he's going to play right away, especially, um, you know, if he were to commit to Louisville, you have guys like. Des Tell, um, Jermaine Lole, assuming that he's back, um, some other guys, Jared Dawson, so on and so forth. Um, some solid players on the defensive line, Rodney McGraw as well. Um, but it's nice that Louisville wouldn't need him to play right away. I wouldn't expect him to play right away, but heading into year two, addressing depth, you're probably going to lose some players to the NFL draft and transfer from the position. You have a very highly rated guy, especially from you know the Cardinals' backyard in the local area. We talk about you know Jeff Brom bringing a much needed revitalization of the local recruiting and how they're going to go up and or up against uh, Kentucky and company, putting a fence up around the uh, city, metaphorically speaking. Um, going to be hard to um, win this recruitment because of the head start that uh, Kentucky has had. But uh, Wu Spencer from the state of Kentucky, from the city of Louisville, um, this is a recruitment that if one coach is going to overcome the odds and win out in the end, it's going to be hometown hero, Jeff Brom. So we'll see how this recruitment ends up going. Um, it's very beneficial and encouraging that the Cardinals get the final say. They get the final visit ahead of a decision coming on February 1st here in a couple days. Obviously, um, it won't be the end-all be-all even if he does have a, a good visit because you have to close out, um, hopefully, Louisville's NIL department. Um you know, the coaching staff are able to seal the deal on this one. Um, I think that Wu Spencer is going to project to be a multiple year starter at the next level. Uh, maybe not year one, but more so heading into year two, year three. Um, I would expect him to probably be on the interior with that strength. But I think, like Alan said, he's got the the speed to potentially move over to the outside as an edge. But um, more so, I think that, um, you know, his skill set, in my opinion, is better suited for the interior of the defensive line. But regardless, like I said, versatility is the name of the game, especially um, among the defensive line positions. So um, one of the key recruitments to watch out for, probably the most important um, heading into uh, National Signing Day, obviously George Burhan, uh, the Purdue tight end commit, 
could be a guy that's possibly on flip watch. We'll talk about Joe Crocker here in just a second in the third segment. I'm another guy on campus, but this is the highest, um, you know, the most um, highest rated prospect on the board right now um, as that we know of, um, but a uh, very, very interesting recruiting battle coming down to the end. Let's talk about the other prospect that's on campus this weekend, Joe Crocker, um, offensive lineman from Tennessee. We'll talk about him in just a second. Before we do that, I want to say thank you all again for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Heading on into the final segment of the show. Talking about prospects on campus this weekend uh, ahead of the uh, National Signing Day on February 1st. Uh, we talked about Wu Spencer being on campus. Another prospect on campus, three-star offensive lineman Joe Crocker from Nashville, Tennessee, um, product of Franklin Road Academy, uh, 6'6", 310 offensive 300, 6'6", 310-pound offensive tackle, uh, ranked 643rd. In the 24-7 sports composite, 44th best offensive tackle, 20th best prospect in the state of Tennessee. Recently, a Mississippi State commit, uh, decommitted um, from the program, and on the 26th of January, got a crystal ball projection with pretty high confidence from Paul Jones, the Mississippi State insider. So um, it seems like all momentum is heading towards Louisville's favor. He has a lot of solid offers for just being ranked in the mid-600s. Uh, Michigan State, Mississippi State, Wisconsin, um, Cincinnati, Florida State, Georgia, Kentucky, uh, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, Pittsburgh, Purdue, TCU, Tennessee, uh, so on. <laughs> Excuse me. So on and so forth. Um, I wonder if decommitting late in the process meant that his options were sort of limited with most uh, programs already filling their classes with the traditional high school recruits and the transfer portal um, you know, players as well. So this is a recruitment that could work out in Louisville's favor. He is on campus this weekend. When you watch his film, you wonder obviously about the um, – the level of competition, but a uh, very, very solid and pass pro uh, does solid in defending, um, you know, or defending, uh, protecting the run as well. Um, solid use of his hands, gaining leverage with his six foot six, 310 pound frame um, has the frame that is pretty much almost, almost immediately uh, college ready. The Cardinals have two offensive linemen that were, brought in in the high school class, Madden Sanker and um, offensive tackle Luke Burgess. Obviously, John Paul Flores from Virginia is another prospect that uh, – prospect, a player. Actually, he only has one more year of eligibility, I believe. He's probably going to be a projected starter at guard. But uh, this makes a lot of sense. At the very least, it brings um, another player into the mix for depth. Um, you know, right now at the tackle positions, you're looking at probably Michael Gonzalez and um, – Adonis Boone, um, or I think I think it's Renato Brown. I think Adonis Boone um, is already gone. I could be completely wrong. Um, we shall see here in a second. Um, yes, Adonis Boone is gone. It's Renato Brown that projects um, as the starting right tackle. Um, I, I think that he's probably going to be a right tackle at the next level. So at the very least, um, he addresses depth uh, heading into this season, assuming that he's needed to. But I, I like that you know he's a, a developmental guy for the future because he could definitely be used in year two, year three. Has the ready frame, like I mentioned, 6'6", 310 pounds. Actually was on campus um, earlier this year, or I'm sorry, last year for a game. I think he came on campus as a junior. Um, I believe I saw him. Um, I, I was a beat writer for Cardinal Sports Zone last year. Um, I was leaving sort of late after a game last season, and I believe I saw him and um, his mother um, exiting Cardinal Stadium. That's why the name rings familiar to me. But regardless, um, not unfamiliar with the University of Louisville, which is solid. But I like this 
a possibility for Louisville because you add another lineman for the future heading into the class, a guy that has gotten offers from a ton of great schools, especially back-to-back national champion, the Georgia Bulldogs. So this will be a great addition um, at National Signing Day um, heading into um, the offseason, heading into spring ball, which we're about a month away. Um, So very, very excited. Uh, I think that this is a recruitment that Louisville fans need to watch for. Um, Wu Spencer, I think, is up in the air. I think that if the visit for Crocker goes well, uh, I would imagine that he would probably commit. Obviously, no inside information, just a wishful thinking at this point. But um, a great weekend. Not big in terms of numbers on campus, but two key prospects on both sides of the football, William Wu Spencer and Joe Crocker. Um, also, we talked about the Cardinals getting a commitment from Karan Davis from the JUCO ranks. So um, that's going to wrap up this special Saturday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.